Hey, what's going on? Alrighty. Out with the new and in with the old. That's what I'm about to do. This camera up here. Kind of a stupid way to set up a camera, but I've been doing it like that for a while, so. You know, an actual tripod might be might be better. But uh out with the new and in with the old. I've been carrying this Ruger new Vaquero of mine that I bought, shooting it, carrying it, which is really what you want to do. Whatever gun you're carrying, you want to shoot that gun and not really shoot any other gun. Um, but I'm not going to be shooting or carrying this gun anymore. The ammo's too expensive, and uh, I was just shooting this at the range today. I said, guess what? I'm going back to my 357 Magnum for a number of reasons. I mean, it's it's cheaper to shoot, and it's about the same to carry. I carry in a vertical shoulder holster, but you know, double action capabilities and uh, adjustable sights. These got pinpoint sights too, but you can't pick up on, on them as well pick up on them as well you know when you grab your gun this is much easier to see and they're they're more they're more accurate too i can shoot this gun really accurate about a fist size group this i can shoot more accurate uh i mean maybe that's the gun i don't know but it's it's, it's the sights is what it is i did put a, a custom made sight i made on there for a real nice tight sight picture but you still have just the frame that you're looking through it's pretty minimal uh, this has got really nice, and I just took them apart and cleaned and oiled them. Fully adjustable sights, side to side, up and down. And I just had it all apart, took the screw out and cleaned everything, and lifted this up all the way and cleaned everything. and. So I'm going to dial the sights in tomorrow, and I, I raised it up a little. I mean, I kind of put them back to where they were. They were already dialed in, but I, I raised it up a little bit higher. We're going to go for a little bit more of a 6 o'clock hold, and uh, I'm going to dump some some rounds through this tomorrow. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I love 357 Magnum. I just get bored, and I, and I end up shooting other cal calibers. But um, the 357 Magnum, to me, is the best round to carry. I mean, there's no one round. 45 long Colt, like a hollow point 45 long Colt, the ones I was carrying, you know, they're like something like around 900 feet per second. I'm sure they would expand. It's a huge round, 250 greens. You get hit in the chest with that, you're gonna go down, but the thing with the 357 Magnum is, it's uh, the hollow points. I mean, they're truly effective. Like, here's one. This is a MagTech hollow point. When you shoot these full metal jackets, they've got some punch to them. I mean, it's no joke shooting that 357 Magnum. And then when you put one of these, and you could feel the energy. It's just boom. It's louder. You can feel that it's got more power, and when that expands, I mean, it's it hits and it just whoo, opens up and just still has all the force and the energy just to rip right through you, about that big and all jagged. I mean, it's just it's disgusting, really. It's nasty. I mean, believe me, if if you were to have someone shoot at you from you know from 50 yards away while you were running, you know and You'd want them to shoot you with this, not with this. Because you get hit in the leg with one of these. I mean, it's liable to hit you in the knee and just rip your leg off or rip your arm off. It's, it's, it's nasty. Whereas this, or like say, say a 45 ACP or something, uh, you know, a full metal jacket or something like that, you don't want to get hit by it, but if you get hit in the leg, I mean, it's, it's not going to do the damage that this is going to do. I mean, a 357 Magnum is no joke. I just saw a guy hunting with 357 Magnum, and he, uh, I forget what he shot, like an elk or something, and it went right through it, 
and the back of the elk I mean was just opened up like this the other side of the body I mean it's like are you serious and he was far away I mean that's just nasty 357 Mangum is, is, is a bad a bad round it really is man and this is just an awesome gun and it's like to me this is a perfect gun I've owned different guns I may end up selling that Vaquero um, I've owned different guns this is one gun that it's perfect it's got a monster grip fully adjustable sights with the flat top on it um, it's heavy but you know, I've been, just been carrying this. I don't know which is which way is more. I don't have a scale. I, re, I, re, I really don't. The Vaquero probably weighs more. You know, there's lighter 357 Magnums than this. But the thing, what's cool about this gun? See, I could take this this trooper to the range tomorrow. I'm not bringing any 38 special at all. And I'll probably shoot, you know, about 75 rounds, 80 rounds. At the very least, 50 rounds of that. And I'll put some of those hollow points through. They pretty much, they pretty much uh, are the same point of impact as these other ones. Any hollow points, at least at the range, shooting paper from, uh, you know, a, a decent distance, but not long range. Like, not, I'm not shooting at 100 yards. But I don't really notice any different uh, difference in impact. If I'm hitting the middle of the paper, it doesn't really matter what brands I switch. It pretty much keeps shooting in the same spot. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, shooting low or shooting high with different ammo. All the 357 Magnum that I've shot from, uh, from decent ranges, normal ranges, seem to all print about the same. Um... So yeah, so that's it. I mean, we're going back to the Colt Trooper. I mean, it's just, it's just an awesome gun, you know. I just had a boredom. I end up I switch things up, I, and I don't really mind carrying a single action gun. But uh, so we're gonna see. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I guess I'm just gonna keep it. I did all so much work to it. Put these grips on here, and look. Have you seen anything wrong with them? Look at that, the screw hole's not centered in that, that diamond. And I went back on the website, and on the picture on the website it has it centered. Of course, when I get mine, they're not centered. Whatever. They're like 35 bucks. Those are Altamont grips, but that's disappointing. Doesn't that look terrible? I mean, it looks so bad that, like, I just left them on there as a joke. Look at that. Doesn't that look terrible or what? not centered on that diamond some people might not care I don't know but I mean, call me crazy but the grips they they fit the gun great but you know I thought about ordering another pair that just doesn't have the print just plain ones you know I don't know but uh, this is a really cool gun I mean for a cowboy gun it's pretty neat but and I've been carrying it and I've enjoyed it but we're going back to 357 Magnum. It's weird how you uh, you always end up going back to what's best. I, I you know I like the the stainless because of, there's no rusting. This you know you got to keep up on it. But now it's winter time, so there's not going to be any moisture. You're not going to be sweating on it or anything like that. So I don't really feel guilty about that. But and it's not a big deal. You just keep the gun clean. And this is an old worn out Colt anyway. Oh, what I was saying is with the Colt Trooper, I don't feel guilty about shooting 357 Magnums through it. I mean, I, these guns don't crack. They don't, you know, nothing like that. They don't crack. They're real strong guns. They're overbuilt guns. You know, I don't really feel feel guilty at all. So, but yeah, these grips are 
kind of nasty looking someone refinished them but, but I don't know it kind of matches the gun what's crazy is all the guns out there you can buy and you end up getting a gun like this an old worn out Colt for like 350 bucks I think I paid for this 350 from a private party so no tax nothing 350 here you go and uh I mean you get this gun it's just it's awesome these guns are all unloaded by the way countersunk cylinders this is one of the first ones from the early 60s I believe and uh, countersunk cylinders, maybe late 60s, I forget, but it's one of the first Colt Troopers. The cylinders are countersunk. And if you can't see that, you see that? Look at that. See how nice and see how those rounds fit in there? Now, technically, countersunk cylinders probably aren't as good because, in case you, you need to get one out, if this doesn't extract it. But I've never had that problem where it doesn't extract. And, you know, in other words, if it doesn't extract, you could pry it out easier if it's not countersunk. You can't do that. But, you know, you just push it out from the other end. You know, people say that, oh, you can't pry it. We well, just get a stick or something, push it out from the other side. I mean, what the heck is wrong with you? You can't pry it out. If I had ones that weren't countersunk and the extractor didn't extract it, which it always does, it wouldn't pry it out. I would poke it out with a stick. So I don't really see that as an issue. And it's just a nice touch, man. It's just an extra step that they used to do back then. And uh, I got other videos on this gun if, you, if you're curious. But the, the Colt double actions were, were amazing. It's a shame they don't make them anymore. Yeah, the, the King Cobra and all those. I mean, just really great guns. The Trooper, this was a sick gun. I believe it's the same frame as a Python. Just didn't have the rib barrel and the action is, is, you know, is ridiculous, man. It's not as good as a Python or whatever, but it's still way better than any Ruger or, or Smith. I mean, Smiths have great action, real old Smiths, but I mean, man. Now nah, these old Colts, Colt revolvers are the, are the best, man. That's why, you know, even uh, I might even trade this off and, and and get a Colt single action. We'll see. I might keep this, but it's pretty slick, isn't it? All the all the work I did on it. Yeah. So, but I'm a, I'm just I'm just a very simple person. I don't I don't like to own lots of guns like i'm gonna put this gun away maybe i'll revisit carrying it and shooting it but i'm not gonna be shooting i'm gonna put it away and it's a neat gun and we're going back it's all about the cold trooper man shooting it carrying it and uh and that's the gun right there man let me tell you all right i'll see you later